Welcome back to the channel everybody and welcome to part two of the Little Guy Racing Parts Ripper Chassis Build. This time we're going to fire this thing up. So if you watch part one, you saw the full chassis assembly. We had the bag of parts, we built it up into a rolling chassis. We got right to the point where we're ready to put the drivetrain in. So that's what we're going to do today. So I've got some surprises for you on this one. I'm going to bring you something that you've never seen before at the time of this recording. We're going to go with a brand new motor setup from Little Guy Racing Parts that's going to bring this thing to life in a big way. Now I'm super excited to get into this, so I'm not going to waste a lot of time talking about it. Let's jump in and check out the components, and then we'll get to installing this thing with the ultimate goal of getting it out on the rocks. It's a beautiful day out today, sunny and warm. It's spring here in New England. I want to get this thing out and get some killer footage and have some fun with it. So let's jump in and get this thing fired up. So overall impressions of this kit, I am totally in love with it. I am so happy that I got my hands on it and was able to build it. I'm super pumped. Now let's take this thing to the next step. Let's kick off phase two. We're going to power this thing up. So let me show you what I've got for the powertrain. You guys ready for this? Got our hands on the brand new prototype Little Guy Racing Parts brushless motor. So this is a very small outrunner motor, very similar size and shape and overall dimension to the Fury Tech Micro Komodo. This is the first time anyone's seeing this thing. Little Guy Racing Parts has kind of hinted this in some of their social media posts and some of their content, but I'm showing this to you guys for the first time. This is early April at the time of this recording. This is an exclusive first look at this brand new brushless motor from the guys over there at Little Guy Racing Parts. Super excited to put this in here and show it to you guys. This is so new. I don't even have any specs on this thing. It just kind of showed up out of nowhere. So they surprised me with this one and I'm really excited to put it in. We're going to pair that with the Fury Tech Tegu 24, TU24, however you pronounce it. You guys know I love this setup. This is going to be a one-stop shop for our ESC and receiver. We're going to hook this up to my avatar that I use for many of my other high performance rigs, but just another really clean, efficient and powerful piece of hardware. You know, we'll be able to run high voltage with the servo on this thing. We'll be able to run the full 8.4 volts and really see what that tremor servo is capable of with this combo. To mount up the new brushless motor, I got the Micro Komodo mount. So it does use the same motor mount as the Micro Komodo. And for a transmission, I've got a Little Guy Racing Parts full billet transmission. Now, I bought a bunch of these a while back and I've just been hanging on to them for builds. So this is a great way to use this as well. So this is gonna be our drivetrain here and I'm super pumped to put this thing together. So why don't we start assembling all of this? I'm gonna have to break down the transmission a little bit, get the motor mount on there, see if we can mount up this motor, figure out how to do it. And then we'll look at getting these all situated in the build and then we'll get this thing powered up. So let's kick off phase two and start installing these things. Here's our motor and transmission combo. How awesome does this look? Super, super mean, right? It's got the black aluminum transmission here with the red aluminum motor mount, the black outrunner motor with the gold kind of gunmetalish logo on here. The whole thing just looks like a weapon of mass destruction in tiny form. I love it. it looks so good. It went together super easy. The motor bolted right up to the Fury Tech Micro Komodo mount, which is you know, very, very easy to work with and compatible with the SCX24 transmission. So the whole thing went together really well. The only trouble I had was just finding some hardware to attach the motor because it is a prototype and it did not come with a pinion gear or the hardware to bolt it up. So I just went through my hardware kit and found some bolts that were long enough. I'm a little concerned that the heads are too small. I wish I had some tiny washers to protect them from being pulled through. So hopefully this stays put. For the pinion gear, I had a spare steel pinion gear lying around. I think this is an 11 tooth that I had just uh, for an SCX24 motor. So I just pressed on that steel pinion gear. So that's what I used on mine. When these hit production, I'm fairly certain they will come with a metal pinion gear pressed on and all the hardware you need. But since this was very, very early prototype and the first one that we've got going into a build, we're kind of just flying by the seat of our pants here. So this is straight up R&D work that I'm showing you guys here, which is super fun. But anyway, here is our combo. So the next step is we're going to put this in the build. Now I built my drive shafts. You know, I had to take 
cannibalize the stock drive shaft and take the U-joint end off here. So I've put them all together. So we've got our drive shafts. We've got the ESC receiver combo. So I'm gonna drop the skid out of the chassis kit and we're gonna see how we're going to fit this if we have to do it backwards, forwards, I'm not sure. I hope that this motor is small enough that we don't have to make any modifications to our beautiful chassis that we just put together, but we'll see. Let's get the ripper on here. We're gonna drop the skid out and see how we can get this in here. So the skid is out. I basically undid everything I did the end of last night. So we've dropped the whole guts out of this thing. And now we're going to put the motor in, see if we can get this situated. It's a tricky part with these brushless systems. As cool as they are, they're almost never a direct bolt in. Okay, see front facing is gonna take some modifications. I'm running into that battery tray right there. It's very, very close, very close. I'm gonna try to flip it around and see if I can get it in there backwards without having to do any modifications. So I'm gonna unwind our chassis even further because now I'm gonna take all these links off. So roadblock number one here is that the, I just found out the hard way, that the skid plate is directional on this because it notches into the frame here, not the same in the front. So in the rear, it has this kind of puzzle piece formation here where the skid plate sits very nicely in, not so much on the front. So I cannot reverse the skid, which is unfortunate. So I've got to make this work front facing somehow. It looks like I'm going to have to notch out the ESC or the battery tray right there. I think I can trim that without compromising a lot of the fit and finish in the structural yeah, no structural impact to that tray. Let's see if I can just get it out of there and cut it. So we trimmed our piece here. I just tried to give it a nice factory cut, smooth lines, trim away any of the excess garbage there. This should be a healthy enough notch to get our motor in there now. So let's dump it in, check it out. Yeah, very nice. It's a shame to have to trim this and cut this brand new setup, but I really want this brushless motor in here. So I think it's worth it. And it didn't take out a lot. So if I have to, for some reason this doesn't work, I can convert it pretty easily and it's not terrible. Now let's button this thing back up. And we'll start looking at where to put our ESC receiver combo and our battery. All right, my friends, let me tell you where we're at. So I think I've got everything situated here. I was just kind of prepping, getting everything ready. So I've done a lot of Velcro work here because I want to make sure that nothing's permanently set just in case. So I've got Velcro on my ESC receiver combo here. This is going to go in the back. It's going to go on the floor right behind the seats. There's a perfect spot for this right here. And my motor cable will reach it perfectly. It's got, well, I had, thankfully, an extension cable for the battery so I can reach through the chassis up to the front where the battery will be. Now, because I had to trim the battery tray, I lost my kind of loop there for the Velcro strap. So what I've done is just stuck a piece of Velcro there I do this to a lot of my batteries is just use this Velcro setup. So when I pop this in here, it doesn't go anywhere. Should be plenty of room there once I slide it back. I wanna make sure there's no interference with the motor. It's a little tricky there, but I think that should fit right there. That should be okay. It gives me some versatility on where I wanna put my battery and the hood will go over that. I'm gonna have to run thin batteries here to fit but that's okay. So the next step is just plugging everything in and then we'll put the tires and wheels on and then hopefully fire this thing up. So just a very ugly setup here, but just fired everything up. I binded the avatar to the ESC, got a battery stuck in here. Let's make sure that I had good steering and then some power. 
thing sounds gnarly. <laughs> okay. This is getting very exciting now. We're super close. So now I just got to clean everything up, get this situated. Here it is, my friends. We did it. We got it hooked up. We got everything situated. This thing is glorious. I am so pumped with this. What we ended up doing was putting everything in the back. I put the Tegu 24 Pro in the back here, was able to run with extension cables, was able to run everything underneath the chassis, get it all plugged in, and maintain the battery and everything up front. I got the Fury Tech app up and running. I got the motor tuned. I was able to up the voltage to the servo to the full 8.4 volts. So this thing is juiced. This thing is ready to go. Before I show you this thing in action, let me just show you the front with the battery set up here. Getting the battery in here was tricky because the extension cable from the ESC stops about right in the fender well here right at the base of the fender well so this battery is in here pretty pretty much with the intention of never taking it out and just having my charging lead right here i'll probably just have to charge it in the rig which is fine i do the similar thing to my warthog build but it's in here it's away from the motor which if you can see that brushed motor is tucked in there and it's all hooked up and the hood closes and everything perfectly so it worked out really really well and the wires are tucked in there nicely there's no interference with anything it's pretty clean in the back i might put some effort into cleaning this up but for the most part it's pretty tucked away and hidden behind this cargo tray i even was able to just stick some lights in here i had some extra led lights from an scx24 and just popped them in so they fit right into the grill so i was happy i did that that was kind of a last minute decision but i think it looks really good so now i know what probably you all want to see and what i want to see is this thing fired up and moving so let's do that right now. Okay, so we got the Tremor servo on the 8.4 volts. It's fast, fast and powerful. You can wiggle right off the table if I let it. Now, are you ready for this motor? Let's check this thing out. Ultra slow. Okay, working my way through the throttle here. Very smooth, very, very smooth. There's that Fury Tech hitch, you know, when you get out of the FOC range, that like 20 to 25% throttle, you get that jump. And I would try to smooth that out with the app, that which I can do. But that low speed control is excellent. The motor makes an interesting noise. It's it's not high pitched and whiny like the Komodo motors are, the micro Komodos. It has more of a, a deeper kind of rich mechanical sound to it. Now this is also paired with the metal geared transmission. So you probably are hearing some gear noise too, but I like how it sounds. It's not overly loud, it is noisier than some of the other outrunners we have, but very, very smooth. Pretty impressive for a first time offering from Little Guy Racing Parts here. This is just on 2S. Remember, I could pop a 3S in there too, which we might explore because that would save me some room up front. But we're just running it on 2S right now. 
but I'm so impressed with this, how it came out. Drivetrain is just the cherry on the top, I think. So I'm super excited to take this thing out, but what I wanna do before we do is just get some baseline performance tests on it. I wanna get my setup table. I wanna test how this chassis works from a performance perspective by the numbers. I wanna see side hill, vertical, you know, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna get my setup table out. We're gonna do that real quick and then we'll hit the rocks with it. With our setup table here, let's check out the RTI on this thing, ramp travel index. I'm expecting some big articulation numbers out of this. So we get to just about 21, we get into the crazy crawler, which is very appropriate. Let's try the back. Back gets just about the same. Let's try some side heel first. It's 30. It's 40. 45. Starting to unload a little bit there. Let's say about 48 on the side hill. We'll try the vertical. Forty-five. Well, oh, starting to unload. They're still hanging on there. Fifty. Fifty-five. I'd say about fifty, fifty-seven, fifty-eight. And the last thing I want to do on this is just get a weight. Coming in battery and everything at 489 grams. Take a moment to look at the paintwork on this thing in the sun. Oh my goodness. Crazy. All right, here we go. Love the control of the brushless. The things I did too, I put soft foams, Crawler Innovation soft foams in these tires as well, the Trench Kings. Struggling a little bit on this section here. I'm unloading in the front. It's those long travel shocks. Yeah, all right. Let's take a different approach to that one. Well, there we go. Look at that grip, man. This is so cool seeing this thing out here. I've waited so long to get this kit. So worth it. What an awesome build. That scale interior is so cool.
very impressed with the brushless motor. It's got a lot of power, a lot more punch out here in real world conditions than on the bench, just messing around with it. Oh, it looks so good. So I take a little break because my motor mount came loose and I lost a motor bolt. So we're back in business. I also took the opportunity to put a 3S battery in this while I had it apart. So here it is with the little guy racing parts, new motor and 3S power. It's definitely very peppy. The Furitec Avatar has, you know, there's a switch that I can hit for low speed which I have if I need it but it actually feels pretty good on 3s pretty slow and controlled but definitely can throw down if I need to well, tons of pain. so I had my first casualty of the brushless motor snapped my front drive shaft right off at the u-joint so after digging through my copious amounts of spare parts the only thing that i could find to fit this was the rear shaft of the ax24 so i've cannibalized the ax24 to get the ripper back in action so 3s power that little brushless motor beware it has parts breaking power apparently back in action here still running the 3s just gonna be easy on this thing now. Try to give you guys my final thoughts. Having a lot of fun with this. It is a beast, that's for sure. The whole thing works really well. You know, the Super 8 axles. I'm loving the Trench King tires with the soft inserts in them. This is the first time running those tires with a different insert. They work fantastic. I do feel like the Ripper is a little top heavy. You can see I'm kind of wobbling all over the place. It is a little tippy because I feel like it does sit high. I would like to mess around with that a little bit somehow, see if I can get the ride height down. But it's just so cool. So cool to watch it run around and do its thing. What a great kit. It is definitely very capable. I haven't tried it on the indoor course on the challenge lines. I should see how it does on the indoor course before we wrap things up, but just want to get this thing out and get some performance runs of it. So here we are on the indoor course. Just want to give just a quick run through here, see how it does on the indoor course material, and then we'll do our typical challenge lines. Running the 3S power on low speed right now. Oh my gosh, this thing looks so cool. I'm really glad I went with the headlights. It just adds just a little bit more to it rather than those empty holes in the front. Makes quick work of the canyon here. Good tight turning radius up top. The Fury Tech system lets me do a good drag brake customization there. I'm running at about 45%, I think, for my drag brake. Did really good on the upper part of the course. Now let's come over here to Mini Moab. You guys know the drill. Let's hit up the escalator, our first vertical technical line here. I 
Nice, even on low power, able to bump up and over that gatekeeper really easily. The Trench Kings did really good on the indoor course during my initial tire test of these things. So far, so good here as well. Even running the softer inserts this time around. Should see some improvement, I would think. I'm understeering over here. Hopefully I can stick it. Let that motor do its thing. I'm getting dangerously close over here. Those lugs are hanging on for dear life right now. <laughs> I think we saved it. Wow. So I did understeer quite a bit there at the top, even at low speed. Coming around the other side, let's hit up the chute. It's just a slick vertical uphill. No issues there. Now Hell's Gate, our last challenge line here. We'll see how this goes. Big unload there. Still hanging on though. So you keep its composure, it does kind of regains composure there going up over that off camber. We can get up and over without losing it. I think we can. Just enough bite to get it up there. Pretty good on the indoor course. Yeah, I think this could really benefit from some shorter shocks up front, but overall, for a first shakedown run, did really good. So that's going to wrap it up for the Ripper build. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini series. This was super fun to put together, and I'm so glad I was finally able to get my hands on this kit, build it with you guys, showcase what it looks like, what it's capable of, and get you some good run footage along the way. So what are my final thoughts, some key takeaways about the Ripper kit? From the kit itself, it is incredibly well put together the pieces fit so precisely just like the ultra 24 the 3d printing quality of these little guy racing parts kits is so so good and that really makes for an easy and enjoyable assembly process everything fits together so smoothly it clicks right in it's such a satisfying feeling when the pieces just come together so easily the screw holes line up no problem just a, a very very professional feeling kit is how I would put it. From a performance standpoint, after we got the Ripper assembled, I'd say it about met my expectations. Knowing my experience with the Ultra 24 and just how that chassis is laid out, seeing the size differences between the two, I knew that it wasn't necessarily going to be as strong of a performer as the Ultra was right out of the gate. With that said, I'm very happy with how it performs. For a kit like this, I mean, it's basically a scale Jeep TJ, pretty much. It's got, I mean, the interior, the cargo rack, the cage, and all the scale details you get, and for it to still be able to perform as well as it does, I think it's very impressive. It is a little top heavy just because of how the chassis sits, because of how the links collide with the frame before it can really sag super, super low. It just keeps the chassis height higher than I would typically set my builds up, but it's not overly top heavy, I would say. One of the things that could improve this tremendously, and I'm going to try this very soon, is a set of shorter shocks up front. I think with a set of shorter shocks in the front to control that drop, you could increase the performance by two or three X, honestly. I think my only issue with how this thing performed was that it unloaded pretty hard on uphills and it would understeer like we saw on the escalator. So I think putting in a shorter shock up front would make a world of difference. And then I think the capability of this thing would like skyrocket, I'm telling you, I think it would. Brushless motor, we gotta talk about the little guy racing parts brushless motor. This thing is epic, so much power. Feels very, very comparable to the Micro Komodo. Smoother, I would say, doesn't feel like it winds out as far as the Micro Komodo. Now, I don't even have any specs on the Little Guy Racing Parts motor yet, so I can't tell you what the KV is or the wattage or anything like that. I can just tell you from driving experience, from driving both of them, I've got lots of time on the Micro Komodo. It felt very comparable, 
felt more meaty on the bottom end and the lower end of the power band and didn't wind out as far as fast as the Micro Komodo, which to me is not a bad thing whatsoever. I think this is a great motor. It's got tons of power, tons of smooth torque off the bottom and very, very cool that Little Guy Racing Parts is offering this in the near future. So all in all, I am in love with the build. I am obsessed with it. I just wanna look at it and fondle it all day long. It is just gorgeous. James from Big Mountain Customs, shout out to James again. Again, I'll put his email in the description down below if you wanna hit him up for custom work. I am just so in love with this build, how it looks, how it performs, the whole experience of driving it. So cool, so worth the wait to finally get my hands on this. So I'm completely enamored by the build. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Ripper? I really hope you enjoyed this build. This was a fun one, and I'm super glad I was able to take you guys along with me. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Big shout out to Little Guy Racing Parts for putting together this awesome kit and sending it over for me to try. I'll put the links in the description down below for all the parts and all the components that we've used in this video. The brushless motor at the time of this recording is not available yet, but I will update you guys when I have more information on that. Otherwise, all the other links will be in the description. Thanks again. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so, and I will see you in the next video.